Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in the previous video of the synchronous counter, we have seen the basic design procedure of the synchronous counter and using that, we have designed the 3-bit up and the down binary counters. And we have also seen that in general, how we can design the n-bit binary counter. So all the synchronous counters which we have discussed so far were the binary counters. And as you know, the binary counters are the full modulus counter. That means during the counting, these counters are going through all possible output states. But now in this video, we will see that how we can design the synchronous counters which can count in a specific sequence. And during the design, what are the things that we need to take care of. So in this video, we will take the two examples. In the first example, we will see that how we can design the synchronous PCD counter which is also known as the mod 10 counter. And then in the second example, we will see that how we can design the synchronous counter which counts in a specific given sequence. So first, let us see the design of the synchronous PCD counter. So once again, we are going to follow the same design procedure. So as you can see, the first step is to find the required number of flip-flops. So since it is a BCD counter, so it will count from 0 to 9. Or we can say that it is the mod 10 counter. That means here, this n is equal to 10. So during the design, if we require the small n number of flip-flops, then this capital N should follow this condition. That means capital N should be less than or equal to this 2 to the power n, where the small n is the number of flip-flops in the counter. So here, since n is equal to 10, so the value of small n should be equal to 4. That means here, to build this PCD counter, we will require the 4 number of flip-flops. So now, the second step is to draw the state diagram. So this state diagram shows the counting sequence of the counter. And it shows that if the counter is in specific state, then what will be the next state of the counter? So here, since it is a BCD counter, so it will count from 0000 to 1001. Or in the decimal, we can say that it will count from 0 to 9. So here, since we have a 4 flip-flops, so it can count from 0 to 15. That means here, the remaining 6 input combinations are the don't care terms. That means here, from 1010 to 1111 are the don't care terms. So now, once we know the counting sequence, then the next step is to find the type of the flip-flop which we are going to use in the design. And according to that, draw the excitation table of the counter. So here, we will design this counter with the help of the JK flip-flop. So now, before we draw the excitation table of the counter, we should also aware about the excitation table of the JK flip-flop because it will be required while drawing the excitation table of the BCD counter. So in case, if you are not aware about the excitation table of the JK flip-flop, then please watch the earlier video on the JK flip-flop. Alright, so this excitation table consists of the present state and the next state of the counter and it also consists of the required excitations to the flip-flop to go from the one state to the other state. So here, the first column shows the present state of the counter and the next column shows the next state of the counter corresponding to the present state. So now, let us find the required inputs for each flip-flop so that the counter can go from the present state to the next state. And to find that, we will use the excitation table of the JK flip-flop. So here, first let us find the required excitations for the J3 and the K3 input. So here, this Q3 represents the present state of the flip-flop while the Q3 plus represents the next state. So as per the excitation table of the JK flip-flop, for the 0 to 0 transition, the J should be equal to 0 while the K input should be equal to X. Likewise, for the 0 to 1 transition, this J should be equal to 1 while the K should be equal to X. Similarly, for this 1 to 1 transition, this j should be equal to x, but the k should be equal to 0. And similarly, for this 1 to 0 transition, this j should be equal to x, but the k should be equal to 1. So in this way, with the help of the excitation table of the JK flip-flop, we got the required j3 and k3 inputs. So similarly, 
let us find the required excitations for this J12 K2 inputs. So once again, here the Q2 represents the present state of the one flip flop, while the Q2 plus represents the next state. And once again, using the excitation table of the JK flip flop, we can find the required values of the J12 K2 inputs. So similarly, by following the same procedure, we can also find the required excitations for this J1 and K1 as well as the J0 and K0 inputs. So if required, you can pause the video and you can find the required J and K inputs for each transition at your pace. So in this way, we got the required excitations for each flip-flop. So once we get that, then the next step is to find the minimal expression for the input of each flip-flop in terms of the outputs Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. So first, let us find the minimal expression of the inputs J3 and K3 in terms of the Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. And here, first let us find the minimal expression for the J3 input. So here, to find the minimal expression, we will take the help of the K map. So as you can see over here, this J3 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination that is equal to 0, 1, 1, 1. While the 2 input combinations are the don't care terms. But apart from that, here as you know, we also have the 6 turn new states that is from 1, 0, 1, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. That means here, we should also consider them as the don't care term. So now, if we map all the min terms in the K map, then this is how it will look like. So here, if we combine this min term M7 with the don't care term, then we can make the group of 2. And this group corresponds to Q2.Q1.Q0. So similarly, now let us find the minimal expression for the K3. So as you know, here this K3 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination, while the 8 input combinations are the don't care terms. But apart from that, here we will also have the 6 more don't care terms, that is from 1010 to 1111. So if we map all these min terms in the K map, then here as you can see, by using the don't care terms, we can make the group of 8, and this group corresponds to Q0, that means here this K3 is equal to Q0. So in this way, we got the minimal expression for the inputs J3 and K3. So similarly, now let us find the minimal expression for this J2 and K2 inputs. And first, let us find the minimal expression for the J2. So here as you can see, this J2 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination, while the 4 other input combinations are the don't care terms. And apart from that, here we will also have 6 more don't care terms that is from 1010 to 1111. So after mapping all these min terms in the K map, here as you can see, we can make the group of 4. And this group corresponds to Q1 dot Q0. That means here, this J2 is equal to Q1 dot Q0. So similarly, now let us find the minimal expression for the K2. So as you can see in the table, once again, this K2 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination while the 6 input combinations are the don't care terms. And apart from that, here we will also have 6 more don't care terms. So once we map all these min terms in the K map, then once again, here we can make the group of 4. And this group corresponds to Q1 dot Q0. That means here, this K2 is also equal to Q1 dot Q0. So in this way, we also got the minimal expression for the J2 and K2 inputs. So similarly, now let us also find the minimal expression for this J1 and K1 inputs. And first, let us consider this J1 input. So as you can see in the table, this J1 is equal to 1 only for the 2 input combinations, while the 4 input combinations are the don't care terms. So apart from this 9 input combinations, we will also have 6 for new states. And here, we will also consider them as the don't care terms. So once we map all these min terms in the K map, then with the help of the don't care term, here we can make the group of 4. And this group corresponds to Q3 bar dot Q0. Because here, this Q3 is equal to 0, while this Q0 is equal to 1. That means this group corresponds to Q3 bar dot Q0. So similarly, now let us also find the minimal expression for the K1. So as you can see in the table, this K1 is equal to 1 only for the 2 input combinations, 
while the remaining six input combinations are the don't get terms and apart from that here we will also have six more new states so once again we will also consider them as the don't get term that means now once we map all these min terms in the k map then here to cover these two ones we can make the group of eight and this group corresponds to q0 that means here this k1 is also equal to q0 so in this way we got the required excitations for the j1 and k1 inputs so similarly now let us find the minimal expression for the j0 and k0 inputs and first let us find the minimal expression for the j0 input so as you can see in the table this j0 is equal to 1 for the five input combinations while the remaining five input combinations are the don't get terms and as you know apart from this nine input combinations here the six other input combinations are the unused states and once again here we will consider them as the don't get terms so now once we map all these min terms in the k map then as you can see here we can cover the entire k map that means here this j0 is equal to 1 and similarly in case of the k0 if you see then the expression will remain same so we can say that here both j0 and k0 is equal to 1 so in this way we got the minimal expression for the each input of the counter so now the next step is to draw the logic circuit so this is the logic circuit of the synchronous bcd counter so as you can see here both j0 and k0 is equal to 1 and here both k1 and k3 is connected to the q0 output and apart from that here these three end operations have been performed with the help of the three end gates so in this way we got the required circuit for the synchronous bcd counter so after designing this circuit the one more step still remains that is to check for the lockout condition so by checking this condition we will see that whether the counter is self correcting or not so the first question is why we need to check this step so here as you know the counter is not going through all the possible states and here some of the output states are the unused states so by chance due to some external interference if the output of the counter goes into the any one of the unused state then automatically it should come back into the one of the valid state and if the counter comes out of this unused states in the next few clock cycles then we can say that the counter is the self correcting counter and if the counter is not able to come back after the few clock cycles and if it still remains in the unused state then we can say that the counter is in the lockout condition meaning that the counter got locked in the unused states and it is not able to come out of it so in that case we need to modify the existing circuit so that the counter can come out of it and to do that first of all we need to check this lockout condition so here the 0000 to 1001 are the valid counter states and the remaining six input combinations that is from 1010 to 1111 are the don't care terms so we need to check that if the counter goes into any one of the invalid state then whether it is able to come out of it or not and to find that what we will do first of all we will draw one table which consists of the present state of the counter and the present input to the each flip flop and the one more column represents the next state of the counter corresponding to the present inputs so here in the first column we will have the all possible invalid states of the counter and corresponding to this present state we will find the all present inputs for each flip flop and from the present inputs we will get the next state of the counter so in the first case as you can see the counter is in 1010 state and these are the expressions for the each input so using this we can easily find the present inputs for each flip flop so in the first case based on these expressions these are the present inputs for each flip flop so if required you can pause the video and you can verify the inputs for each flip flop so here since j3 and k3 both are zero so this q3 will remain in the same state or in other words this q3 plus is equal to q3 so in this case it will remain one similarly since both j2 and k2 is zero so this q2 plus is also same as the q2 and similarly 
since g1 and q1 both are zero so this q1 plus will also remain in the same state on the other end if you see this j0 and k0 inputs then both inputs are one that means the output of the q0 will toggle and that is why here this q0 plus is equal to one so in this way if the present state of the counter is 1010 then at the next clock pulse it will go into the 1011 state similarly now let us see what happens when the counter is in 1011 state so corresponding to 1011 these are the present inputs for each flip flop and as i said earlier using these expressions for the each flip flop we can easily find the present inputs so now here since j3 is equal to 0 and k3 is equal to 1 so this q3 plus will remain 0 similarly in case of the j1 and k1 inputs also this j1 is 0 while the k1 is equal to 1 that means here this q1 plus will also remain 0 on the other hand both j2 and k2 and j0 and k0 is equal to 1 that means here both q2 plus and q0 plus outputs will toggle at the next clock edge so as you can see since q2 is equal to 0 so at the next clock edge this q2 plus will become 1 and here since q0 is equal to 1 so at the next clock edge this q0 plus will become 0 that means if the present state of the counter is 1011 then the next state will be equal to 0100 so similarly now let us see the next state so in this case the current state of the counter is equal to 1100 and these are the corresponding inputs for each flip flop so as you can see when both g and k inputs are zero then the output of the flip flop will remain in the same state and whenever both g and k inputs are one then the output of the flip flop will toggle that means here corresponding to 1100 the next state of the counter is equal to 1101 and similarly by following the same procedure we can also find the next state of the counter for the remaining three input combinations so in this way now we know that when the counter is in any one of the unused state then what will be the next state of the counter and to understand that in a better way let us represent them in the state diagram so as you can see when the counter is in 1010 state or in the decimal when the output of the counter is equal to 10 then at the next clock pulse it will go to the 11 state and from the 11 it will go to the 4 similarly when the count is equal to 12 then next it will go to the 13 and from 13 it will go to the 4 and likewise when the count is equal to 14 then next it will go to the 15 and from the 15 it will go to the 0 so as you can see when the output of the counter is in any unused state then in the next couple of clock cycles it will go into the any one of the valid state so we can say that the given counter is the self correcting so like i said earlier if the counter is in one of the unused state and if it comes back to the any one of the valid state in one or more clock cycles then we can say that the counter is the self correcting counter so in this case this given bcd counter circuit is the self correcting and since it is self correcting so there is no need to modify given circuit but if the counter is not self correcting then we need to modify the existing circuit so let us take the second example where the counter is not self correcting and let us see how we can modify the existing circuit so let's say we need to design a counter which counts in the given specific sequence so as you can see the counting sequence of the counter is 0 3 5 and 6 and once again it comes back to the zero so once again we will follow the same steps so as you can see the first step is to find the required number of flip flops in the counter so here this is the counting sequence of the counter and as you can see the counter has the four different output states or we can say that the modulus of the counter or this capital n is equal to 4 so if we follow the earlier procedure for finding the required number of flip flops then as per that the value of the small n will be equal to 2 or we can say that as per that procedure the required number of flip flops is equal to 2 but as you know with the help of the two flip flops we can count from 00 to 11 or in the decimal 
we can count from 0 to 3. But here as you can see, the counting sequence also consists of this 5 and 6. That means if we just use the two flip-flops, then we cannot count this 5 and 6. So in this case, we cannot use this method to find the required number of flip-flops. Because we can use that method when the counting is following the binary sequence. Like if the counter is counting from 0 to 8 or 0 to 5, then in that case, we can use this method. So if the counting sequence is not in the order, then in such case, we need to consider the maximum count in the counting sequence. So in this case, the maximum count in the counting sequence is equal to 6, that is equal to 110. And that maximum count should fulfill this condition, that is n max should be less than or equal to this 2 to the power n minus 1. So here, this n max represents the maximum count in the counting sequence, while this small n represents the required number of flip-flops. So as per this equation, the required number of flip-flops is equal to 3. That means to design this counter, we will require 3 flip-flops. So now, once we have decided the required number of flip-flops, then the next step is to draw the state diagram. So as you know, this state diagram shows the all possible output states of the counter. And it shows that if the counter is in specific state, then what will be the next state of the counter? So in this case, since we are using the three flip-flops, so we will have total eight different output states. And out of that eight states, the four states are the don't care term. So here, the states shown in the pink color represents the don't care terms. So now once we know the state diagram, then the next step is to select the type of the flip-flop which we are going to use in the design. And based on that, we need to draw the excitation table of the counter. So here, we are going to design these counters with the help of the T flip-flop. So during the design, we should be aware about the excitation table of the T flip-flop because we are going to use that while drawing the excitation table of the counter. So in the excitation table of the counter, the one column shows the present state while the second column shows the next state of the counter corresponding to the present state. And in the last column, let us find the required excitations for the each flip-flop to get all these transitions. And to find that, we are going to use the excitation table of the T flip-flop. So first, let us consider only this Q2 column and let us find the required excitations for this T2 input. So here, this Q2 represents the present state of the flip-flop while the Q2 plus represents the next state. And using the excitation table of this T flip-flop, we can find the required T inputs for each transition. So here, for this 0 to 0 or the 1 to 1 transition, the required value of the T input is equal to 0. While for the 1 to 0 or the 0 to 1 transition, the value of T should be equal to 1. So similarly, by following the same procedure, these are the required values of the T1 inputs and these are the required values of the T0 input. So if required, you can pause the video and you can verify the inputs for each column. So in this way, we got the required inputs for each flip-flop. So now, the next step is to find the minimal expressions for the each input. So first, let us find the minimal expression for this T2 input in terms of the Q2, Q1 and Q0. So here, the four input combinations which is shown in the green color are the valid input combinations while the remaining four input combinations which is shown in the red color are the don't care terms. So first, let us map all these min terms in the K map. So here as you can see, by using the two don't care terms, we can combine this min term M3 and M6. And in this way, we can make the group of 4. So this group corresponds to Q1. Or we can say that here the T2 is equal to Q1. Similarly, let us find the minimal expression for the T1 input. So as you can see, here this T1 is equal to 1 for the 4 input combinations, while the remaining 4 input combinations are the don't care terms. So here, by using the 4 don't care terms, we can make the group of 8. And since it is a 3 variable K map, so we can say that here this T1 is equal to 1. So in this way, we got the expression for the T2 and T1. So similarly, let us find the expression for the T0. So if you observe over here, then this T0 is equal to 1 for the two input combinations, while the remaining four input combinations are the don't care terms. 
So once again, with the help of the two don't care terms, we can combine this main term M0 and M5. And in this way, we can make the group of 4. So this group corresponds to Q1 bar. Or we can say that here this T0 is equal to Q1 bar. So in this way, we got the expression for the each input of the flip-flop. So now, the next step is to draw the logic circuit. So this is the logic circuit of the counter. So as you can see over here, this Q1 bar is connected to the T0 input while this T1 is connected to the logic 1. And similarly, this Q1 is directly connected to the T2 input. So now once we got the logic circuit, then next we need to check for the lockout condition. That means if the counter goes into any one of the invalid state, then whether it is able to come out of it or not. And for that, let us find the next state of the counter when the counter is in any one of the invalid state. So to find that, we will require the three columns. So here, the first column shows the all the possible invalid states of the counter. That means the first column shows the present input. And corresponding to that specific state, we will have the present inputs for each flip-flop. That means the next column shows the present input for each flip-flop corresponding to the present state. And from the present inputs, we can easily find the next state of the counter. So by observing the next state of the counter, we can know that whether the counter is self-correcting or not. So here, these are the four invalid states of the counter. So according to these expressions, here this T2 is equal to Q1, while the T0 is equal to Q1 bar. And as you can see, here this T1 is equal to 1. So now based on these inputs of the flip-flop, we can get the corresponding next state. So as you know, for the T flip-flop, when this T input is equal to 0, then the next state of the flip-flop will be same as the previous state. And whenever this T is equal to 1, then the output of the flip-flop will toggle. So according to that, these are the next states of the counter corresponding to the present state. So as you can see over here, when the counter is in 0, 0, 1 state, then the next state will be equal to 0, 1, 0. Similarly, when the counter is in 0, 1, 0 state, then the next state of the counter is equal to 1, 0, 0. Likewise, from the 1, 0, 0, it will go to the 1, 1, 1. And from the 1, 1, 1, it will go to the 0, 0, 1. So the same thing is also shown in the state diagram. So as you can see from the state diagram, once the counter goes in any one of the invalid state, then it is not able to come out of it. And therefore we can say that the given counter is not self-correcting. And due to that, here we need to modify the existing circuit. So here, to modify the circuit, what we can do? We can generate the reset pulse whenever the counter goes in any one of the invalid state. And this reset input will bring the counter into the 0, 0, 0 state. That means here, when the output of the counter is in any one of the invalid state, then this reset input should be equal to high. And for any other states, this output should remain 0. So here, we can easily find the logical expression for the same thing with the help of the K-map. So as you can see in the K-map, we cannot combine these four main terms. But using the Boolean algebra, we can easily find the equivalent expression for this reset input. So this is the expression of the R in terms of the sum of product form. So as you can see, in these first two terms, we can bring this Q2 bar outside. And similarly, in the last two terms, we can bring this Q2 outside. So if we take this Q2 bar and the Q2 outside, then this term is equal to Q1 x or Q0, while this term corresponds to Q1 x nor Q0. Or if we see the overall expression, then that is equal to this Q2 x or Q1 x or Q0. That means here, the expression of the R is equal to Q2 x or Q1 x or Q0. So to reset the counter to 0, 0, 0, we can apply this input to the clear input of the each flip-flop. Now if the clear input is the active low input, then we need to apply this reset input through one NOT gate. Or in this case, this is how we can generate the reset input. So here, since the clear is the active low input, so we need to invert the expression of the R. That means now, this R is equal to Q2 X or Q1 X or Q0 whole bar. Or we can say that this R dash is equal to Q2 X or Q1 X or Q0. So here, to generate this inverted signal, here this XNOR gate is used. And the output of the XNOR gate is applied to the clear input of each flip-flop. 
that means now whenever the counter goes in any one of the invalid state then it will reset the counter to 000, 000. so now this modified counter circuit will eliminate the lockout condition and this is the modified state diagram of the same counter so as you can see when the counter goes into the any one of the invalid state then immediately the counter will get reset to zero so in this way we can eliminate the condition of the lockout so i hope through the two examples you understood how to design the synchronous counters which can count in a specific sequence so if you have any questions or suggestions then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos